Usually when I get ready to make one of these videos, I'll sit down the day before and try to do a first draft of the redesign so that the recording doesn't take six hours. Um, but this time I wasn't actually able to do that. The interface is so complicated and there's so much information packed into one dense little spot that I just couldn't come up with anything reasonable yesterday. Um, so we're gonna have to try again completely fresh today. And the reason that the interface is so complicated is because we're dealing with a tool called Porefessor. Now, for the vast majority of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, there is a game out there called League of Legends. It's a multiplayer online battle arena in which 10 players, five on each team, are each competing to destroy the other one's nexus. It's like their base. And as you're going about it, um, each player has their own champion, their own abilities, their own items that they kind of grow over, this, over the sequence of the game. And before you start the game, you're given kind of a preview as to which champions each player, known as summoners in the game, will be playing, and all the abilities they've got in their loadout. Now, because that exists and because League of Legends is so popular, um, tools have emerged to help people understand what they need to know about various champion and loadout combinations so they're more likely to win a game. And Porefessor is one of those tools. And now, as you're seeing here, there's just so much information on this screen. And it's very, very difficult to compact it all into one single screen because you gotta think people are playing the game with this on their on their second monitor right so they don't want to have to be clicking around on that screen it just has to be presented there and as a player of league of legends myself i know how important all of this information is nonetheless here we are in uh professor in, in figma rather we've got our style guide as usual i've just taken all of the colors accent text colors from their site they're using open sans i believe so a very very flexible very very flexible uh font face yep open sans and uh here's my reference screenshot with a couple of pros you might recognize and then we've also got a couple of components that i've put together uh, preemptively because we need to use a lot of there's a lot of really complex assets and like um, icon iconography that we need to properly redesign an interface that tells you something about a League of Legends game so all of this is kind of just done ahead of time to save me a bunch of time and as usual we have our list of stories here as a user, I want to quickly understand the team dynamics of the current League of Legends game I'm about to begin. Of course, on top of that, we want to allow users to search for specific players using Porefessor to, to kind of just see if they're playing a game and get some information about what's going on, and then spectate that game if they want to using the League of Legends client. So, we're going to go ahead and get in here and uh, try again redesigning this very, very difficult interface, very dense interface, in a way that's uh, useful for, for people to have in their second monitor while they're playing the game. So, sit tight. I'm going to go ahead and get started here, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Here I'm creating the search widget for the navigation bar. And as you'll notice, League of Legends is an international game with lots of different regions. So when searching, we need to let users specify the region. And a tactic I like to use when designing is if you're using a control that influences a parent control, if you just set it inside that control, oftentimes just to the, to the side of it, um, the implication to the user is very clear and it's a very natural way of solving that problem. Figma very recently released a whole bunch of improvements to their component tools. If you haven't had a chance to check them out and learn, out, learn how they work, I'll pop a video in the description for you you can use to go and learn a little more about them. A heuristic I like to follow when you're creating user interfaces that are particularly supposed to be used by Western audiences is to put controls to the right side of their containers. So buttons, anything that the user should be interacting with, generally speaking, 
the user's eye is going to move to the right when they're ready to interact. So placing the button there just saves them a bunch of time, uses all that affordance. So right now I'm creating the summoner card, which is by far the most complicated and difficult part of this design problem. And you can't really see it right now, but off to the side, I have a text list of all of the items I want to include in this interface or in this component rather, ranked by how important they are to the user. And given that I'm a regular user of this game, I can be fairly confident in my assumption here. So you'll see that certain items are much bigger than others. That to me implies that it needs to take up more space and pull more visual attention. And that's how I get around the problem of building very dense interfaces um, without overwhelming the user with a bunch of information. Some may say that this is a crux, but for me, I really abuse opacity when I'm trying to control the user's visual attention. If you have particularly some text and you want users to read part of it, but they, you also want to present them with the additional part of the text, but it's not as important. Generally speaking, I just fade it out, apply a 60% opacity filter or something, and that achieves the desired effect. One of the higher impact design flaws that I found with the original Poor Professor site was that it was really hard to, at a glance, see what everyone's rank was in a, in a given team. So here I'm making sure that the rank icon, which players of this game are very familiar with, is very clearly visible from the moment you glance at the summoner card. Poor Professor actually gives you a list of the typical items that a particular user builds generally on the champion that they're playing uh, but you have to click on the interface to see it but when i'm playing a game i really want to see this information it's one of the most important parts of helping me understand if i'm going to be successful that day and what i need to do to counter their builds so i floated it to the top of the card and it's uh, always visible now If you remember the original layout, the Poor Professor site will give insights into how a particular player plays the game. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, <clears throat> but they pull quite a lot of visual attention because they're either saturated green, red, or yellow. So I'm solving that problem by giving the user the same visual information, but by moving all the color into a very small dot just to the side of that particular tag. And I don't know if you can tell from my face here, but this is where I realized that there's really no getting around adding some kind of interactability here. There's just too much information. So I floated all the critical information to the top and moved things like trends, things that you might want to look at before the game starts, but aren't absolutely critical into another tab and giving users an easy way to swap between all of that information at once instead of having to click on each individual section like you have to do today. A cheeky little design trick that I use all the time is to put the label for a particular piece of data below the actual data itself, uh, because that is the information that users are most likely most interested in, not necessarily the label. Uh, they'll learn the placement of the data over time, so the label becomes increasingly less useful, um, but that the data itself is the most important part, so that should take up the majority of the visual space in, a, in the component.
here what you're seeing is my squirrel brain just neurotically worrying about how to fit all this information on a single desktop screen. So I'm playing with scroll controls and full screen buttons, um, and I think I end up just scrapping this idea altogether. Um, but I do think that some kind of full screen experience would make a lot of sense for a tool like this. Okay, I'm gonna force myself to stop there. Um, as you can see, I was tinkering around with it a lot at the end there. <clears throat> but as you can see, now we've got a pretty solid layout with a typical league matchmaking game. <clears throat> Players from diamond all the way down to silver in the same match. Um, but at this point, I really feel like we've kind of captured everything we needed to do. Um, just looking at this immediately, the stuff that's important to me is the mo is most visible, right? Um, I know immediately kind of how people are performing, like what their performance is on a particular champion, what champions I'm playing with, their ranks, and then some little insightful stuff like is this person good with wards? Are they really a really particularly aggressive laner? Um, <clears throat> And then it all fits on one screen, you know? The only thing I was considering tweaking is removing these labels because people generally know kind of what they are. It's not really necessary. And <clears throat> potentially even just removing this title area altogether um, because ultimately um, users don't really care about the title of the, of the game. They're mostly interested in this. But you can always just scroll down and have everything in one screen here. So I think this is a good place to leave it. Anyway, as always, Thanks again for watching. I hope this was insightful for you. Definitely one of my longer videos for sure. Yeah, I guess in the end, I'm not really sure why I did this. You you could just use op.gg instead. Huh.